this evening I've come out to the edge of town where there's already a bit of nature you can see all the greenery around me you can hear the river probably and I just came here out uh, during sunset to shoot a roll of film with this camera all right enough of that noisy audio in that clip I was just trying to quickly introduce the camera so let me just do it this way I wanted to briefly talk about it simply because I think it's quite special a while ago, I was scrolling through the Austrian second-hand market on the lookout for cheap film camera deals and found some crazy bargains, such as this Zenit E for only 10 euros. This camera, on the other hand, was not as good of a deal for 50 euros, but I was so intrigued by it that I bought it anyway. This is probably the oldest camera I have. According to my research, this camera was built in the 1950s. I think there are two aspects of this camera that definitely point towards its age. Firstly, the viewfinder, which you can only use after winding the mirror up to shoot, whereas newer SLRs do that automatically. So after pressing the shutter, all you see is black until you turn the knob to wind the film and the mirror. The other aspect that, in my opinion, points out how old this camera is, is the shutter speeds and the lever. This camera has a maximum shutter speed of 1 150th of a second, and the control for the shutter speed is not a round turning mechanism like I think all cameras I've ever seen. This has a lever, like a gear stick when driving a manual car. Anyway, that's enough about the camera. I went out in the evenings to catch the sunset to finish my first roll that was in the camera to finally find out whether this thing actually works. I knew that the shutter works, but I didn't know whether the times are accurate. So I started off by shooting this wooden fence that was glowing in the warm sunlight. You already briefly saw this photo, so you of course know now that the camera fortunately works. I think this is a great shot to start off with. I love the lighting here, which is the main reason for me to capture the scene. The way it mixes with the shadows from the trees and the way it hits the grass and the leaves on the right to create this glow has such a mood that comes across in the photo I find. Then, just to the right, I spotted more good-looking light. I enjoyed how the sunlight was hitting those bushes on the wall. I spent some time looking for a composition and ended up getting this, which is not at all what I was originally hoping to get, and unfortunately I don't think this really worked out. I was actually intending to capture the leaves and the sunlight, which both sadly turned out quite dark and the result now revolves more around the sky and the shape of the leaves, but not up to the potential I had seen in this scene. I know, the light is vanishing. <laughs> Then, I walked over to the other side of this space, where I wanted to get a photo of this gate in the fence because it was glowing so beautifully in the sunlight. Here's the result, and I like it. It's fairly simple, and I'm not sure how fond I am of the subject, but it's again the lighting that does it for me. The way the fence glows in the warm orange atmosphere really emits a sense of romanticism and carefree moments in life. Like, something I'd find myself longing for when looking at the picture. Then, I left this place and walked onto the road where on the other side I spotted something. This rock and the way the sunlight trickles through the leaves and lands on the rock felt worthy of a shot. Here's the result, and it's alright. Not quite what I had envisioned though, it's a bit moodier than I hoped it would be and so it doesn't quite convey the feeling I was going for. Then, when I looked down the road here, I thought this little town was actually really cute and so I wanted to get a shot. To get a slightly higher perspective, I also stood on the edge of the bridge here. This is the result and it almost worked. I love how the road continues into the distance leading the eye through the sun and the shade and the various details of the town, but one major annoyance in my opinion is that sign on the left of the photo. 
while composing, it didn't feel so present, but now when looking at the final result, I kind of find that it ruins the whole photo. However, excluding it was only partially possible while composing, because I would have needed to get off the bridge and hence give up the higher perspective. Then I decided to walk along the road into town and along the way I found a cute little post box on the wall of this house. This is the shot and I think this one turned out wonderfully. I love how this photo points out a detail of the scene here, but includes the environment and even the weather in the background. Also, I think those leaves in the foreground add a lot of interest to the photo by adding colour, texture and depth. Oh, look at that! I was in awe of the mood in this garden and tried to capture that with this photo, which I think worked out pretty nicely. I love the golden light again, the way it hits the grass and glides through the trees. I think the mood is certainly conveyed in the picture. Then, I was trying to find a composition of the mountain, but couldn't find the right angle yet. Also, this sign looked interesting, but I couldn't find a good way to compose it. But from this spot, I then thought that the photograph of the mountain could work. My issue before was that the buildings at the bottom would always weirdly peek into the photograph from below, but from here I was able to frame the mountain without interference. The result is cool, I like it. One minor thing that I'm not satisfied with is the light and cloud situation. The grey behind the mountain is a bit of a pity and also the sun was just dipping behind something so the sunlight wasn't as strong anymore. But nevertheless, overall this shot worked out. Doesn't really work. Then, I found this cute yellow house that had so many sweet details that I wanted to capture its front from here. This is the result, and I think this one turned out nicely. I enjoy the foreground I was able to include here, meaning the front gate and the tree. This neatly frames the photograph. The house as the subject works great in my opinion. What intrigued me while shooting, and still does now, are the many details and decorations this house has in the front area for people walking by like me to look at in awe. Also, I love the colour of the house, I find it suits the whole scene so well, and another small thing I find interesting are those closed blinds that have this strong brown colour which further increases the interest of the colour palette in this picture. I continued my walk along the road and my GoPro was somehow already running low on battery so I switched to the Sony for a little while. By the way, this evening I finally decided to buy a second GoPro battery so hopefully I'll not encounter this issue in the future. Anyway, the next composition I found was of these two mirrors here. The shot turned out alright but I don't really see anything particularly intriguing here. Shortly after, I found another house which I found pretty interesting and I got this shot. This one turned out quite nicely I find, I enjoy the scene which again offers many small things to look at which I simply try to effectively balance in a frame in a pleasing way. Something I unfortunately dislike here though is the lighting. The sun is actually behind me but it had gone down behind a mountain at this point and so the light here was just so flat which I find is a bit boring. But apart from that, I think this is a decent shot. The next composition I found was another cute house front. This one came out alright, but it's by far not as good as the first one I find. Next I found this house with the roses rising above the front bush. 
I got this photo, which I find captures the house and the environment pretty well. Also, the roses work nicely as that little detail. Something worth pointing out that I enjoy is how the mountain just rises up behind the house so that it covers the entire background. Just one thing again, the lighting is not working for me. Then later I came across this scene here, which I found quite interesting. The boot with the flowers and also that milk canister, something here was intriguing. The shot however sadly didn't work out I find. The two subjects are pictured but it feels a bit off, maybe I should have gone closer or maybe it's the lighting again, it just doesn't convey the same feeling I had when I initially saw it. Then I came across a house which again I thought was a cool subject. The photograph kind of worked, but the lighting is so against me in this one. The subject is falling off into darkness while the sky at the top is exposed quite nicely, which just doesn't really make a good photo I'm afraid. Then I found this adorable small path between some houses and bushes. This shot does work I think. The light was vanishing, therefore I was having my difficulties before, but here I got this warm glow from the top right and an overall more dynamic lighting situation which set the scene in a more interesting way. I think this shot turned out beautifully. Then I had charged the GoPro in the meantime and put it back on my head from here on. I had just come to this road that leads to some fields. On the right in the distance I spotted a house that looked sort of hidden away in some bushes. I liked the overall scene so I tried to get a shot. This is it and it's pretty cool I think except that the light has vanished already. Therefore the bottom has unfortunately come out really dark which makes the house hard to see. But the idea of the composition is great I find, I like the leaves in the foreground and the mountain on the right. If only I was here an hour earlier the field and the house would be lit up in some great golden light I think. I continued on the path and came across a puddle which I decided to play with a bit. I spent some time finding the right perspective for a shot of the grasses in the reflection. This is the result and I think it's pretty cool. The clouds are a bit too moody for what I was actually going for, but overall the idea worked out. Then I wanted to get another shot of the grasses but this time in a silhouetted way with the sunset in the background. This is the photo and I like it. Concentrating the exposure on the sky instead of trying to capture both worked out nicely here I find. The silhouette aesthetic suits the subject matter here perfectly. Also, the sky is looking quite fancy seeing as we've been having many cloudy and rainy days here lately and this evening was just before another rainy night so at this time I got to include some glowing clouds in the photo. Next I decided to walk onto the field and look for some more subjects there. I found an interesting spot that I decided to shoot. This is the outcome and it's not bad but it didn't really work. The exposure is looking good and I'm loving the colours, however the composition seems to be missing a proper subject. I feel a bit lost when looking at this photo, not knowing what it is about, so I guess it's just missing a little something. What exactly? I don't know though. Then further out on the field I had come to some pretty high grass and decided to get a bit low and shoot another photo of the sky but with the grass in the foreground again. This is it and it's cool but it doesn't work as well as the previous one. The grass that is in focus here is not positioned in a way that it's silhouetted, instead it's in front of the forest which doesn't highlight the grass shape. Nevertheless the sky is looking good again. Next, I spotted some flowers across the field which looked promising. Ooh. 
I somehow underexposed this one by mistake, so it's become mostly a slightly muddy green photo with spots of white from the flowers. I do however like that dramatic glow from the top, I was not expecting that to happen. Anyway, after that I continued my search for more compositions, but only then noticed that I had finished my roll. Finish the roll. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? I forgot that the counter of this camera is either broken or I don't know how to use it, but either way, this ended the shoot of this evening and so I headed home. I'm so happy that I finally finished the first roll through the camera and now know that it works fine. The results of this session are overall alright, with a couple shots that I personally like a lot. Let me know if there are any that you enjoy in particular, I'm always curious to read your thoughts. So that's it for this week, I hope you enjoyed it, if so I'd appreciate a like, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week, until then, goodbye.